All right, so we're looking at uh, lesson 16. Uh, we're going to do some problem solving, which everybody loves. Um, some of these are going to ask you to find the maximum or minimum, which we know means vertex. Uh, but they're only going to give you the equation. And that's sometimes a tricky thing to do. So to figure out how to do that, let's take a look at a graph. So let's say this is my graph. And I want to figure out this point, but I don't actually have the graph to look at. I just have this. But what I can do is I can figure out, okay, if I look at this zero and this zero, I take the two roots, I know that my vertex is going to be right in the middle of those two roots. So a very quick way to figure out, well, what is my vertex would be to figure out what are my two roots and then just look at my middle point. And that's what we're going to use a couple times during this lesson. Okay, so first thing, it says uh, find the maximum revenue the student council can make and the new ticket price it should charge in order to get the maximum revenue. So here we're looking for sure at um, taking a look at the vertex. So our equation is negative 25, what is it, p squared plus 100p plus 3500. That's our equals. So we want to start off by factoring and definitely we want to be able to common factor first, right? So Let's take that negative 25 and we can just divide everything uh, by negative 25 if we'd like, or we can just factor it out. And we're left with p squared uh, minus four and then that 3,500, when we divide that by negative, it's gonna be negative 104. So we have p squared minus four p minus 140 and then we go to our next line. So now we can factor this just by finding two numbers that multiply um, to our negative 140. So we want two numbers that multiply to negative 140 and two numbers that add up to negative four. Okay, so what multiplies to negative 140? Well, we know minus 14 and positive 10 are going to work for us. So what are our two roots? We have negative 10 and we have positive 14. So I want you to just think, if we drew this graph, we know that because of this, it's gonna be opening down. One of our roots is gonna be at negative 10. The other root is gonna be at 14. So if it looks something like this, we know that this vertex would be right in the middle. Now we gotta figure out, well, what is middle. What's halfway between 14 and negative 10? A very easy way to figure that out. We can say a little formula like this. So we'll take root 1 minus root 2 and then just divide it by 2. So we'll take 14 uh, minus negative 10 and then divide by 2. So that's going to be 24 divided by 2 which is going to give me 12. And hold up, because that does not seem right. Halfway between 14 and negative 10 should be something a whole lot smaller. And that's because I switched that formula up in my brain. It should be plus. So let's add those things together. My bad, folks. I'm just making sure you're paying attention. So when we do that, we get 14 plus negative 10. We get 4 divided by 2. And that makes a whole lot more sense. We get 2. So halfway between these things is the number two. But of course, that's definitely not the most money they could earn. In fact, if they earn two bucks, they probably should not be running their concert. So what this is, is it's the x-coordinate of that. So if we follow this x-coordinate all the way up, eventually we could find our y-coordinate. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take that two and we're gonna plug it into our equation. So r equals negative 25. And now instead of p squared, we know we're gonna be using this two. So we'll use 2 squared plus 100 times 2 plus 3,500. So now when we do this math, uh, that's going to be negative 100 plus 200 plus 3,500. And that is going to equal 3,600 is my maximum. So all I did there is I found the x-coordinate, that magic x-coordinate of my vertex, plugged it in, and I found the y-coordinate. Perfect. Now, B, what is the original 
uh, revenue before the ticket price is raised. That is our Y intercept, and we know how to do that. All we need to do there, R equals negative 25. Instead of P squared, we're gonna substitute zero squared. Plus 100 times P, we're gonna make that zero, plus 3,500. So the original revenue would have been 3,500. Okay, and this one was 3,600, so I'll box that. What part of the quadratic relation represents the original revenue? We know the answer to that. It's this part here, the y-intercept or that c-value that represents our original revenue. Okay, a model rocket is launched from a platform. So we know already if this is our graph, it's definitely not gonna start at zero. It's gonna start somewhere probably up here because it's starting on a little platform and then it's gonna launch like that. So what is the height of our platform? What is our initial height? Well, we don't have to look too far for our initial. That's gonna be our initial right there, our y-intercept. So we can say the initial height is our y-intercept or 15. What is the height of the model rocket after four seconds? Well, we're gonna need some math for that. Height equals negative five, and instead of t squared, I'm gonna put four squared, plus 100 times four, plus 15, and that's gonna give me negative five times 16, so that's gonna be negative 80 plus 400 plus 15, and that's 320, so that's 335. Perfect. So all we did there is we just plugged it in and we get a height equal to 335. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a look at C. It says what's the maximum height reached by the rocket. So I'm gonna show you a little shortcut. We can figure out, if this is our rocket, we can figure out this x coordinate of our vertex very easy using a formula that I showed you in the lesson. It's a little bit of a shortcut. So it's x equals negative b over two a. So that's all we need to do. Instead of doing all that factoring and dividing by two and doing all that, let's just use this easy, easy way to figure it out. Okay? It's always important you see the hard way before you see the easy way. Not only so you know how to do it, but so you appreciate it. Negative b over 2a. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the negative b, which is this 100, so we're going to change it to negative 100, over 2 times a, so 2 times a and a is negative 5. That's going to give us negative 100 over... Uh, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, so you get 10 as your x-coordinate. But that's not the maximum height, that's just where this thing is. So now what we need to do is we need to plug that value of 10 into our formula, and then we'll be able to figure out what the height is. So our height is going to be negative 5 times 10 squared plus 100 times 10 plus 15. And that's going to give us negative five times 100 plus 1,000 plus 15, and our height's gonna be negative 500 plus 1,000 plus 15, which gives us a total of 515 as our high point. So our maximum is 515. How long does the rocket take to reach this height? Well, guess what? We already figured that out. We said that's going to be our 10 second value. All right, and Perfect, and I think that's where we're gonna enough for number two. Okay, number four. Um, number four is about launching a model rocket from a platform. So we have our expression, h equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 100 t plus 13. What's the height of the platform? That talks about our initial value or that y-intercept. How do we get that? Well, we can set t equal to zero, or we can just look at that last little part there. So either way, we're gonna end up with the same answer. We're gonna end up with 13. What's the height of the model rocket after seven seconds? Well, we're gonna use some math. So we'll take negative 4.9 instead of t. Now we'll substitute seven to see what the height is at seven seconds, where we see a t. And then we can just take out our calculators and we can make that happen. So let's open our calculator and we get negative um, 4.9 times So I got, let's double check that math because I didn't like that. That's a lot better. There we go. 472.9. Perfect. What is the maximum height reached by the rocket? So let's finish that. Um, here we can actually take a look at our vertex because we're talking about a maximum. 
So we can use our little shortcut. We can say x equals negative b over 2a, and that's going to give us the x coordinate of our vertex. It's not going to tell us the maximum height. For that, we'll have to figure out our y coordinate. But we can take our negative b, which is negative 100, over 2 times a, so 2 times negative 4.9. And when we do that, we get 100 uh, divided by 98, so we get 10.2. Okay, so that's the x coordinate of our vertex. Now, knowing our x coordinate, now we can put it back into the equation and then look for our height. So we'll have height equals negative 4.9 times 10.2 squared plus 100 times 10.2 plus 13. And when we do that, we can easily figure out exactly how uh, high this thing shoots at its maximum. Remember, since this thing opens down, we know that it's going to have a maximum value, which is why we're allowed to solve it this way. So our height is 523.204. Perfect. So that is the answer there. How long does the, top, does the rocket take to reach this height? Well, we actually already solved for that up here. That is this value. So we found the coordinates of our vertex, 10.2 comma 523.204. Perfect. A set of fireworks designed to explode at the highest points. We have a couple of equations that model them. We have actually four equations here. Uh, so find the height and time at which each of the fireworks explodes. So that's going to be basically find vertexes or vertices. So we're going to find the vertex for each one of them. So I'll start with equation number one. Equation number one is going to be this one. So we have x equals negative b over 2a. So the negative b there is negative 50 over 2 times a, which was negative 5. So that's going to be negative 50 over negative 10. So that's going to give us 5. Okay. So we know the time of that one. Now let's figure out how high that one is when it explodes. Negative 5 times 5 squared plus 50 times 5. And if we do that, we get a height of 125. Okay, perfect. So that is the first one there. Now we're going to do the second one here, number 2. Second one, x equals negative b over 2a. We get negative uh, 60 over 2 times negative 5. So we're going to get 6 now. And then we'll put it into our equation. h equals negative 5 times 6 squared plus 60 times 6. So we have negative 5 times 6 plus negative 6. So this one's going to be a little bit taller. It's got 180. All right, let's jump to 3. This one over here is 3. So we have x equals negative b over 2a again. Here we'll have negative 70 over 2 times negative 5 equals 7. And then we're going to use that, put it into our equation. Negative 5 times 7 squared plus 70 times 7. And that's going to give us, let's take a look. This one's even bigger than that. So this one's 295. And then the fourth one, this final one over here, we have negative 5 times, oh, first I got to figure out exactly what time this is going to explode at. x equals negative b over 2a equals negative 80 over 2 times negative 5, which is 8 seconds. Then we're going to have height equals negative 5 times 8 squared plus 80 uh, times 8. And that's going to give us a height of, let's take a look. Three hundred and twenty. So we found it for every single one. We could even go back and write the vertexes. This one is 6, 180. This one is 7, 295. This one is 8, 320. And the top one was 5, 125. So we found all of those values. Okay, uh, last one here. 
Tickets for the Players Theater sell for $5 each. So we have our equation, R equals negative 12.5P squared plus 125P plus 2,500. Find the maximum revenue. Maximum revenue. So for maximum revenue, we need to find our vertex. And we know a quick little shortcut to make that happen. X equals negative B over 2A. So when we do that, we can take our negative 125 over 2 times negative 12.5. I think that's going to give us 5. Yeah, definitely will. And that's going to give us 5. So what does that mean? That is the x coordinate that tells us nothing about what the maximum revenue is. It just tells us how many um, price changes we would need. So that gives us the x. We need to find our y. So let's put it into our equation. r equals negative 12.5 times 5 squared plus 125 times 5 plus 2500. I'm going to need my calculator for that one. 12.5 times 5. Okay, and that revenue is going to be 2812.50. Awesome. So that was the answer to the first one. For B, it says find the number of 50 cent increases needed to obtain the maximum revenue. Well, we have solved for that already. Basically, we need to adjust the price five times. Okay. Now, it tells us what our revenue is. It tells us how much we need to change that price. What's the new price going to be? Well, it says that originally we sell them for $5 each. And what this five means is that's how many times we've upped the price by 50 cents. So we started out at $5, and then after one price change, it became $5.50. After another price change, it became six, so on, 6, so on, 6.5, 7. So that's the first price change, second price change, third price change, fourth price change, and then we end up with our final price change of $7.50. And that would be our last ticket price.